How's it going boys? Welcome back to another brand new video and today we're gonna be talking about Abaddon. We're making a guide on Abaddon and whatnot because you know this hero honestly is is it's actually a pretty good carry. I have had decent win rates with Ab- oh shit never mind but Abaddon is still very good like the if you you can go carry Abaddon you can go support Abaddon and the best thing about Abaddon is that in certain games, okay, I say certain games because not all games, he's literally a better version of Wraith King. Now, I'll show you guys why. So, this is essentially Abaddon. So, you have to understand about Abaddon is that one, he has no stuns. So, that's like a big downside of Abaddon. He has a very, very good slow and basically survivability to the maximum. Maximum. Um, he doesn't have a stun though, so you know you kind of like need stuns on your team, or else you're gonna get kited, and he does get kited pretty hard. So Abaddon, as you all know, the biggest, the best thing about Abaddon is the shield and the ultimate. Now I'm gonna get into that in a second here. Depending on what you're playing, okay, if you're playing support Abaddon versus carry Abaddon versus whatever Abaddon you play, it really matters a lot what uh, what you play because. Let's say you're playing some support Abaddon, then you're probably going to go shield and max your mystic coil. Maybe one point in this, but if you're playing carry Abaddon, it's kind of like, I get Radiance. So we're going to go through both, kind of. Uh, I kind of like Abaddon in the off lane, mid lane, safe lane, essentially any lane. So if you're playing support Abaddon, this is where you go. You go shield into... Uh, mist so you max uh, so you max your shield and mystic coil maybe get one value point in the curse if you feel like you can chase people down because sometimes you can you know grab all of venom and just like walk people down because you have very high movement speed 325 that's like pretty much higher than most heroes in dota plus the double slow you can you can like run them that chase them down pretty far and once you hit them four times you hit really fast and you slow all like you just slow them and you know good stuff essentially uh yeah that's kind of abdon now in the lane you kind of want to just do this so i can't even demonstrate this properly so i'm gonna do it like this so in the lane abdon is kind of good in lane because one you can harass enemies with this thing and uh and the best part about abdon in the lane is that so your carry is like, you know, your carry is getting fucked. And then you're just like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to shield you. Boop. He's losing HP. I'm just going to shield him. Oh, yeah, he's not even taking damage. Jesus Christ. I'm going to give myself a heart. So, yeah, the shield is nice and the uh, you just heal people. It's pretty good. Very easy sustain. I will say Abaddon is one of the best supports for doing that. If you read this ability, it damages yourself by 50%, but it's fine. If you're playing support Abaddon, you go like Tranquil Boots and you won't have any issues at all. Um, Sometimes I like go Mana Boost because you kind of need mana. Depends, depends, very depends. Um, As you can see, this is at level 4, this is 260 HP with a 5.5 second cooldown at 50 mana. That is basically free, in my opinion. 50 mana is ignorable. Now, if you look at anyone else, like, we can give you the most basic one, like Dazzle, for example. This is a Shadow Grave. Now, Shadow Grave heals you based on how much damage, like, it fucking does. So, this is, like, what? 140. Yeah, like, it's garbage. I heal double of that with lower cooldown. With a way lower cooldown, even at level 1. And it's way less mana. It's like less than half of the mana. So that's just Abaddon. Uh, essentially, your carry needs to buy no regen at all. You don't have to even buy a salve. You might have to buy for yourself. But you know you can buy a bunch of clarities, mangoes. Preferably mangoes. And your carry should be at max HP the whole time. And uh, the best thing about Abaddon supports is that he doesn't die. He can't get jumped. If the enemy has like a PA or something, or these heroes that like to jump on the back line and just kill your supports in a second, like Spectre, PA, all these heroes, they try to, you know, jump. They always want to kill the support Lion or like the support Rubik, stuff like that. 
so they're just like out the fight like boom you're dead in two hits like what are you gonna do nothing so abaddon nah not really you kind of just like fucking pop borrow, borrow time show yourself and the best thing about it is that if you're uh if the enemies are stunned then you can like shield your allies and it purges off the stun so i'm gonna show you guys something real quick Let's say I am playing... I'm just gonna grab the most basic stun in the fucking game. Wraith Dog. So, let's say I stun him, right? I can shield this guy. Instantly gets uh not stunned anymore. Why is that, you guys may ask? Because it's, uh, it's actually pretty cool. It's something called... What's it called? Oh, yeah. Strong Dispel. So... You know, strong dispel can dispel you pretty much from anything that is not undispellable. Now, if you use, there are some um, my, man, items like Manta that have basic dispels, but it only this it you can't get unstunned. You know what I mean? Like if you can get basic dispels or dispels that are dispellable, where you like essentially slows. Like let's say you're like a Venomancer Gale. If this guy gales you. Slows you by 15 seconds for 50%. That's a lot of that's a lot of slow in a long fucking time. Now you can manta out of that, but you know, yeah, but you can also add on shield out of that. Now if you get stunned like before, the manta doesn't do shit. Even if you could use it, it wouldn't dispel you. But the shield does, which is like really really good. So if your carry gets stunned and he can't press BKB, like he's getting chain stunned, you can shield him and he just has enough time to press BKB. That's very strong. And it like kills him. Other thing you have to know is that once you have the shield on you, you can like kind of like tank damage. Because uh, like the damage that you take doesn't actually affect you in a way, if you know what I mean. So like let's say I am uh, shielding myself and this guy's like punching me. Yeah, I can straight up like blink away. Wait. Okay. Okay. Dude, can you stop being a bitch? But yeah, this guy's punching me. I can still blink away because I'm not actually taking damage. This kind of works the same way Refraction does on TA. Because TA doesn't, you know, TA doesn't get damaged and she can blink while being refraction. It, it actually works the exact same fucking way. Um, for the talents, uh, I think, you know, movement speed is okay. But you're already really fast. Like, you don't really need it. Unless if you're getting kited really fucking hard. Like, let's say there's a tinker or something just kiting you really hard. In that case, you might have to buy a blink dagger. But I would say the strength is almost always better. One, more tankiness, more damage, and more HP and everything. Level 15, if you're a support, you're going for the Mystic Coil heal damage every time. Because one, you're not going to be right-clicking. Two, you can't really right-click because you have no attack speed. And three, well, you have free attack speed. But the best thing is that you want to heal your teammates. If you're carry, you go damage. Level 20, honestly, I go to cooldown reduction every time. Just because you have like some items to use and all of your spells are really fucking good with cooldown reduction. Essentially, you can use your ult like more than once in a team fight. That is very strong. But if they have like a shit ton of minus armor like TA, Slardar, maybe consider the 9 armor. Honestly, I'll just buy Blade Mill, Halberd and just go AC. Honestly, like it's way better. But you should have take this. Level 25... A biotic shield is almost always better. Mystic coil AoE is kind of a fucking meme. Like, it's like this. Yeah. Oh, you can't even instant cast it like Bristol back. Yeah, that's fucking stupid, dude. What? I mean, okay. Dude, you can't target self. Can I target creeps, though? It doesn't even work. Oh my god, yeah, this spell is dog shit. If they can make it on targetable, like it's literally like a bristle back cue where you press it and it just like goes all around you. Oh yeah, maybe then it's like good. This is fucking shit right now. Um but yeah, Abaddon. So one in the early game you can kind of dive them because their shield explodes, so you can like kind of chase them on their tower a little bit. So you know, like your shield your shield is getting tanked and whatnot. And you're just like chasing them on their tower. 
and then the shield explodes, boom, you get a kill. It's pretty good. Um, yeah, that's kind of like Abaddon. Oh yeah, one thing you have to understand is that one, this does not work if you get popped instantly. If the damage is over 400. So how do I show you guys? Let's say there's a lion, right? Level up enemy to max. Let's give him some fucking damage. What is it? This? Agonums? I don't know, dude. Some spell amp. So this does what? 1,000 damage. So let's say that the lion fingers you, fingers you again. So right here, I'm gonna die instantly. Because my health is less. So it's not at 400, but he's gonna instantly kill me. And the Abaddon doesn't pop. It's not like Wraith King where you always die and you respawn no matter what. You have to fucking press this manually. The only other way is that, let's say the damage gets you to here. It doesn't fully kill you, then it pops automatically. It has to be below 400. If they have any way to fucking just kill you before popping it, you have to pop it manually. Now the good thing about Abaddon's ulti is that it's just like in Rage, with an Aghanim Scepter. Meaning that if I fucking stun you, you can fucking like just do this and just walk away. Like, you can just do this and walk away. So if you see, like if the lion just stuns you and waiting for his team, you can just leave and it's fine. Uh, you can't shield yourself though because you are stunned. But this is like the same thing as like a Ursa ulti. With the axe so you can use it when you, you are stunned. The only problem is that I don't think you can... Yeah, you can't use it when you're hexed because you're silenced. When you're stunned, you can use it, but when you're silenced, you cannot use it. So, like, getting ghouled, for example. Uh, what else is there? Um, that's it. Like, that's it for the hero. The itemization... I'll just go support Abaddon first. So, if you're playing support Abaddon, this is what you're buying, guys. You are buying these items. You're gonna buy regen, wards... You're gonna buy maybe a Basilius. Now, if you're buying this, it means you're turning it into a Vlad's most likely. If your team doesn't need Vlad's, like let's say your carry just has like innate lifesteal, like lifestealer or Wraith King. Your mid hero is like a Tinker who doesn't lifesteal at all. Then yeah, probably don't buy Vlad's. It's kind of shit. You could go for a Solar Crest if there's anyone to buff. You know, it's always good on like, you know, Sven, Drow, Ursa, every anything really. Right clicker. Uh, go Tranquil Boost because you're going to be losing HP by spamming Mr. Coil. And, um, you, you need mana, so you're probably just going to buy Clarities. This also, re like, both of these items gives you mana regen, which is really nice. This is okay if you're, like, pushing to win the game. Four Staff for saves. Halberd, Pipe. Auras are really nice. And last but not least, you could just go Shard and Ags. These are, like, they honestly don't change the game. They're not Game Changer fucking shards or, or eggs but they are like they are just there you know they're just like okay but they're not like the best but they they do exist you know that's that uh glimmer cape is okay lotus orb is kind of shit because you have like you have a free lotus orb this is like the best the better version of lotus orb the only thing is that it doesn't reflect the spell so sometimes you might have to do that and holy locky guys yeah, Holy Lock is very good on, on Abaddon. It amps every heal you use, uh, re apply by 35%, meaning I'm pretty sure it works on Vlad's. And it probably works on fucking Pipe, so like you just heal your team more. And you just heal everyone more, like this. You're just like healing people more as you just walk around the map. It's pretty fucking good, if you ask me. And this is like a 300... 300 and 15 damage heal. That was very good. With like a 5 second cooldown. Even less with the thing. So yeah, it's pretty fucking good. Now, you know, support Abaddon's are for pussies. And we're all alpha mills here. So we're gonna play... Carry Abaddon. Now, carry Abaddon. This is what you do, guys. Very simple. I have made so many guys on these. This is the build, right? Max shield, max this. Get this last, like, this is, you're not using this for anything, okay? This is literally fucking useless. You, you first of all, you might get it in lane, like, maybe. It is, like, a 110 damage nuke at level 1, which is not bad. 
you could use it to secure range creeps in the hard lanes and you can potentially use it to gank because you could use it like quite it often however you're, you, you are going to lose HP as well which is kind of annoying uh, otherwise you know this is literally just fucking useless it's kind of like in the late game kind of like a meme it's like it's, it's more effective in the early game than the late game and uh, yeah the talents you know I already told about talked about talents now here's the thing about Abaddon one he gets kited really hard and two Abaddon just because you're a carry or mid doesn't mean you can't save allies always watch out if your allies are gonna die shield them bro you have your ult still by saving your allies sometimes like if let's say your juggernaut gets jumped and he's just gonna fucking get popped but because you shielded him he's gonna get like just that little bit of time to spin away now if you can do that holy fuck you're probably winning the team fight imagine they just dump all their spells on the fucking juggernaut on your team and you just like shield him he spins and uses healing ward and you heal him boom he's like 100 percent hp again now they just use all their spells what happens now you fucking win the team fight it's actually that simple uh, as for the item build though you know quelling blade ring of protection because you only have like three base armor so yeah it kind of fucking hurts when people click you so the ring protection is really nice and you can make this into a uh vlads or ac preferably ac eventually um these items are okay honestly i kind of just go bottle rushing now if i'm like mid or off lane you know you rush bottle you grab runes and then you go boots if you're winning really hard you could go for orb with uh orb of corrosion if not you don't have to the phase boost is really nice and um you know fucking it makes you run fast want because you need mana you actually have a big mana issue if you're not buying bottle i suggest you probably just go soul ring um actually no you don't have you have an hp issue as well holy fuck this hero is bad um i guess you can just buy clarities that's probably the only other way <laughs> to be honest so that's why i say bottle so good because you need hp and health both things you have no way to get like otherwise you don't have a way to actually get hp and health without buying it it's kind of sad now i just rush radiance now people might be like wait why are you rushing radiance on abaddon and the simple reason is because two things one without radiance you're literally useless you're not gonna do anything in this game because abaddon what happens to abaddon is that he's gonna get he's gonna walk in and hit people super slow do like two damage and just fucking like get kited you need radiance to be able to just like stand there forever and here's the thing they either focus you and lose or they focus not focus you and lose so before when you don't have radiance what would happen is that people would you know like ignore you essentially and just kill your whole team and then kill you but once you have radiance if they just like go on you you have you have fucking alt and you have shield like you're not gonna die so your team is not getting stunned and they're gonna kill everyone now if they go on your team you can shield them and even if your alt doesn't get popped you're fucking burning the fuck out of them because here's the thing man usually you get radiance at like minute 17 to 18 that's like the average time for abaddon mid if you rush it with just like you know phase boost wand and radiance you can usually get it at that time and during that time like it's kind of late but it's still very effective because you're gonna be alive for the entire time and abaddon does not give a fuck bro big balls just go in you're not like sitting on the side you're going in like you're staying in the middle of the fight the entire time burning everyone and generally once you get the radiance you kind of hit a power spike where your whole team follows you and you just like hit towers and you push really fast guys Radiance plus the curse take powers in like two seconds so they either fight you and fucking die or they ignore you and you take their tower it's very easy um after that i kind of like to go sny because you can disassemble this into a manta and a halberd now this is what i really like sny is just good and then you disassemble it one because the cooldown reduction works with these items and two, any physical damage, you just halberd them and then they can't fucking do anything, right? Troll Warlord, Ursa, Monkey King, all that shit, you know, easy halberd, Sven. 
And for Manta is like if you get silenced or whatnot, or if you you just have more dispels. Honestly, you do not need BKB on Abdon because one, they're not gonna pop you, and two, you have like 50 billion dispels. Just get Manta and you're fine. Only get BKB if they have like a Tinker with Perma Hex or something, or else you don't need it. After that, depends on what they have, right? Magic damage, you could go pipe. Uh, a mixture of both. You could go Scotty. Like, Scotty's okay, but you already have this. So I'll say AC is pretty good. Because more building push and just more attack speed. And the last item, you can, you can go whatever the fuck you want, really. Abyssal Blade is really good for stunning people because you don't actually have a stun. Scythe in certain scenarios. BKB is okay. Uh, Nullifier, if they have like Pugna or whatever. Uh, Shiva's for PL, you know, Mil Milstrom, all these are okay. Blink Dagger if you just need to like fucking catch people. They're all very viable. Essentially, Abaddon is really, really strong hero and he's pretty fucking good. Now, remember how in the beginning I said Abaddon is literally like a better version of Wraith King in some games? And that is true. But if they have stuff like AA, which is probably the worst one, and if AA blasts you when you're fucking ulted, you don't heal, you just fucking die. But when you're Wraith King, you die and you respawn. That is the difference. Now, if they, like, don't have that kind of shit, you know, Abaddon is actually better than Wraith King in that aspect. Because, one, uh, Abaddon doesn't get countered by a lot of heroes in lane compared to Wraith King. Like, let's say if they have, like, an offlane uh, Legion. Well, offlane Legion doesn't really counter Wraith King. Let's say if they have, like, an offlane Underlord, offlane uh, Centaur, Tide, Bristolback even. And the biggest one being like a, like a Venomancer or like some support with a really long slow. That is super fucking long. Like, I don't know, man. Bristleback's goo is kind of one. Uh, the biggest one is a Venomancer with like all these slows. Maybe like CM, perhaps. Warlock with like all this shit. Like, one, if you're up against a Venomancer, you can just shield yourself. Oh, yeah, Bat Rider too. Bat Rider. Huge one. Huge one. No one plays this hero anymore, but Batrider offline used to be like a thing. And when you can just dispel this shit, like, oh man, yeah, you, you're fine. Um, another thing is that Wraith King gets killed by Batrider, Abaddon doesn't. Uh, so you're so you're good against some lane matchups, and plus you you do like okay against most offlaners because you are kind of like an offlaner yourself. Your mid towers in a bit of a bang. It's kind of like playing Bristol carry in a way. But yeah, that's essentially it, guys. Hope you guys learned something, enjoy the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the Twitch, check out the Patreon, check out the anything and everything boys. Have a very nice day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.